Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And today I'm going to be talking to you about the, the rather awkward subject of Naquium. Because we've finally reached that stage of the game where I'm going to have to go out and start dealing with this endgame material. And so I started having a look through the recipes required, and as you can see on the on the screen here, there's there's quite a lot of work required to make Naquium, and it takes an awful lot of input. But we'll concentrate on that a little bit more in a little while. The first thing I ended up doing was uh, put, was putting together some vague ideas of what, what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go, how I wanted to get the Naquium, and so I've decided that the best place is going to be this the uh, the asteroid field of Stardust here. So Kalidus is down here, there are a few other places that are closer, but if we look at all these we can see there's not very much Naquatite there, or 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 even there. So of all of these asteroid fields that are in a reasonably that are reasonably close by, Stardust is the only one that has a decent quantity of Naquatite. But that has 650% on the frequency so, and and decent size and numbers as well. So it looks quite promising. It looks like a good one to go to. And so I did a bit of scouting, and you'll probably have, you'll have seen this briefly earlier in in, in a previous episode when I was uh, talking about it, the uh, the exploration and trying to decide where to go and and deciding this seemed like probably quite a good place. And so I uh, had had a bit of a think about what I was going to need. So Naquium is going to. There's a number of steps to it, as as we said. Uh, and the first one is is just mining the stuff up in the first place, um, and that requires sulfuric acid to do. So I'm going to need a supply of sulfuric acid out here. So to do that, I thought the best way to do that would be to start digging up some. I uh, could dig up some water from over here. There's a, there's a water ice patch out on the uh, out on in this asteroid field, so I can dig up some of that. So that's going to be that's going to be useful. And also going to need iron and sulfur. Well, the iron can come from this little patch over here. Now this. This is a rather small patch. I'm a bit concerned that we're going to rip through this quite quickly and then have a and then have an iron shortage. But but worst case, I can always ship it out by uh, by spaceship if I need to. The sulfur. Well, there are a few possibilities came to mind. One is that there is there is actually a patch of methane ice here, and I think there's a couple of other ones around as well. Um, there's a little bit poking in the top there. Um, I know a bit more over here. So there is some methane ice out here, and you can turn methane into sulfur. But it's a rather long and complicated process. So you need to take the methane ice, melt it into methane gas. Which you can then mix with bio sludge, and then you'll get some bio sludge back, and some contaminated bio sludge, and you get and you get some crude oil out of it, and then the crude oil you can cook down into petroleum gas, and then turn that into sulfur. But again, that requires quite a lot of water. And yeah, we've got some water over here, but it's not going to be an infinite amount of it. There, there is at least a little bit of it, but it's going to take a lot of processing steps to get the to, to turn the methane gas into the sulfur. And I decided there's so many different things needed in there, including the bio sludge, and there's no good supply of that out here, that I decided that one's not worth it. So we'll bring out the um bring out this sulfur by yes. Uh, by spaceship to make the make the acid, and so I dropped in a, a landing pad uh, blueprint for the spaceship. This is a uh, Mark standard design, and because I made the uh, the interstellar ship that you saw before fit this design, it's going to be able to fit into exactly the same uh, footprint here, which is quite nice. And then this is going to be bringing in certainly iridium. We'll talk about that in a moment. Also sulfur, maybe iron. So these will then flood down the belt over here, over over this way, and then we're going to have the iron coming up in this train, being being smelted into actual iron plates here brought over and then the sulfur and the iron can be passed in along with water and that'll make the sulfuric acid. The sulfuric acid then needs to be taken away to any any useful patches. So there's a couple of decent patches over here. So I've put in I've put in a, a brief sort of sketch of where I would like to have a station and I've started designing uh, sketching out some railway lines as well. And over here this is going to be my Naquium train and it's huge. The nice thing about the space trains is that the, because they're maglev trains there's actually propulsion in all of the uh, all of the wagons as well as in the locomotive. So you do need to have a locomotive on the the front to give you something that you can program, but you don't need to have a large number of them to give you a decent amount of acceleration and motive force, because all of the uh, wagons will also provide some oomph to the train as well. So that will allow the uh, train to trundle along uh, reasonably quickly, I think. And with um, eight wagons to fill up with uh, Naquatite ore, that's going to bring back hopefully a reasonable amount each time it runs. I say hopefully because the, the problem with Naquatite, or in, in, in all of the Naquium products as far as I'm aware, is that they don't stack very highly. And so in order to transport a decent amount of it, I'm going to need quite Quite a big train, hence all of these wagons across here. So if it stacks up to 10, that means 100 per row, so 500 per wagon, which means 4,000 in all of this train. Na and uh, mining Naquatite takes quite a lot of sulfuric acid, so it's 20, 20 for each one, so 4,000 means we'll need 80,000 acid in order to fill this train up. So on the back of here we've got three wagons, because these take 30,000 each, so that means we'll be able to fit 90,000 sulfuric acid in there. So when these are all full, there'll be slightly more acid than is actually required to fill the train up. And I think that's a good, that's the, the right side to be on, of the, the, the right side of cautiousness to be on. Make sure there's slightly more acid than required rather than slightly less. So yeah, that's, uh, that's going to allow us to bring in a full train load with the 
the with the with the amount of acid on the back of it. At least that's the plan. The only problem with this design is when I start to put in multiple stations, we'll need to send a train out to a station to unload the acid before the acid will then be able to be used to mine up the uh, the, the naquium. So I'm wondering if perhaps the na the acid should be taken on a separate train. But I quite like this idea of having a single a single train on here. Maybe I'll just have one train for each each naquium patch I put down. So we'll link these two together. Have a single station down here. This one I'm going to bring in on a long belt. Um, well, there's going to need to be a pipe going up here as well. So a long belt and a long pipe because it's so close. It feels like it feels a bit silly to have a train going from here to here but I'm thinking in the future we'll have trains going up a bit further because there's a, there's a Naquin patch down here and down here I'm imagining there's going to be some more of them that I can find if I explore further off this way so we're definitely going to carry on expanding this area and making it make, making it bigger and bigger finding more and more Naquin because I don't I imagine as we get further into the deep space science that just having a couple of small patches isn't really going to be enough so the next stage of the of the, of the Naquin plan is what is um, is turning it into crushed Naquitite and this is very very worth doing doing because at the moment the naquim as I said only stacks up to 10 and when you crush it down to produce the crushed naquitite well you get an immediately you get a four times improvement in the density because it takes eight naquitite to produce two two crushed naquitite and you also get another doubling because the stack size is twice as big so you can fit 20 crushed naquitite in a stack so that immediately means you're requiring eight times less logistics or in other words you're getting eight times as much naquitite out of every spaceship load that flies and so I think this is very very worth doing and all it requires is iridium so we can ship the iridium out here in Ingo form that's going to be fairly easy along with the sulfur that we're going to need uh, then we can crush this down and then ship back well we can re obviously recycle the iridium plate that's just going to go round and round and round in the circle um, but and then the uh, iridium powder that's being produced we can just ship that back in the spaceship as well and then deal with it from somewhere on the other end because if we have another look at this diagram, you can see that the uh, Naquium processing does produce rather a lot of quite unhelpful uh, byproducts. So we've got the iridium powder over here on the left, and then down at the bottom we've got beryllium powder. At the top we've got the holmium powder, and so all of those are then going to be need to be shipped back to the respective planet. So um, the, the holmium powder will go to Njord, the beryllium powder will need to go to Talos, the iridium powder will need to go to Kothar, so that they can then be reprocessed back into the metals and then reused again. And yes, Naquium basically uses pretty much every Everything. It certainly uses all of the exotic materials with the exception of Immersite because that's K2 rather than uh, space exploration. So yes, I've decided I want, to, I want to pulverize it, crush it down on this planet. So we've got all these rows of uh, pulverizers, well, mechanical facilities which will work as pulverizers in space that will uh, pull in, as you can see on the on the blueprint here, the, the naquia, naquitite will flow in. That'll get pulverized down along with, uh, and the, the iridium will get passed back round again. And then down here we've got the, the, the disposal belt down the middle taking away the, uh, the crushed naquitite and also the spare iridium powder. That can all go into the spaceship to be taken away and dealt with somewhere at the other end. I've got four rows of these machines here. Each one of these is capable of dealing with a full uh, space belt of naquitite coming in and producing a decent, well, we're between them and they're producing a reasonably, good, a reasonably good supply of it on the way out. But remember what I said earlier, if for every four belts that go in, you're going to get one belt out, but then there's also going to be a little bit of the uh, powdered iridium in there. So having having two belts coming out here is, is a good idea. Um, all of this is fully speed modules to make it go uh, decently quickly and not use too many machines. I have used the cheap speed modules, the tier three ones, rather than anything more advanced because to be honest this isn't that big a build I think this will probably be absolutely fine and I'm hoping that at least for the first couple of deep space uh, science packs that this the, these four belts of uh, Nacrotite coming in is going to be enough to keep it satisfied. Uh, it is quite an expandable design though, all it needs is just another additional copies of it somewhere to, to allow us to get that extra throughput. And then as that comes out of here it simply gets fed into the warehouse over here um, along with the methane ice that we're going to be mining up from here although I'm going to have a control system on this to make sure we don't send too much of it over because Again, on the diagram, as you can see, we're going to need methane toward the end of the process to make the naquium ingots, um, and I'm worried that we won't have enough of that coming from Big Rid. So, you know, this will allow us to make sure there's always plenty of it available. That then just gets fed into the spaceship, as you've seen, as you've seen plenty of times before. The other thing I've put, I've, I've got built up so far, is the um, is, is power for this area. Now, this is mostly complete. We've got the uh, the, the energy beam receiver, and as you can see, that's now up to the full 10,000 degrees C. Um, I made sure that was more or less the first thing I put down, so I could get it starting to warm up while I built everything else around it. We still don't have power here. Now I've managed to make, I've managed to do a bit of mining and so on by uh, by pulling power out of my spaceship because that had 
plenty of it because again that's got an energy beam receiver on it so it's got a huge thermal battery but since last time last time I built one of these I um, I, I uh, used the spaceship to boil water and then stored it in steam tanks because the spaceship had the heat battery on it um, and then used that to power the uh, the base while the ship was away this time in order to do something different this time I put in a beam receiver here and I've got that being toasted by the by a, a beam emitter over in Kalidus orbit and that's managed to keep this uh, up I've got bring this up to temperature quite quickly even over this ridiculous range the problem is that I don't have any water available here yet. So um, at some point, as, as I was saying, we're going to be mining the water up out of the, uh, the the water patch all the way over here, then bringing it over a train load at a time. Where in this case, a train load is a mere 500, uh, a mere 50 stacks because we've got a single wagon on here. But I'm pretty sure that's going to be absolutely plenty because w water ice goes a very very long way. The reason this train is still here and hasn't gone anywhere, is, and, with the, and, and therefore that we haven't got any water and the whole system has is just hasn't started running yet, is because I forgot. Of all, I made I, I thought quite hard about all the things I needed to bring out with me, and I brought quite a lot of them, but I forgot train batteries. So there's no battery, no batteries for the train. Um, therefore, the train can't run. Therefore, we don't have water. Therefore, we don't have power. Um, so what I'll need to do is bring a load of those batteries over, put in a couple of charging points here, and then also probably have some system for replenishing them uh, from the spaceship. So over here we've got the spaceship is already planned to bring batteries over, uh, and when it does, then we can bring them over. They can be fed down here, and we can we can use those to keep all these trains running, and and this one up here. And I'll do all the charging of the batteries on site for those, I think, because I might I might as well, and just and, and just drop off drop in any any extra batteries as and when they're required. I did also forget to bring out a thermodynamics facility, although rather that's not a forget, forgot actually, because I was when I when I filled up the ship, I hadn't even thought of mining iron on site. I was planning to bring it out in the spaceship, but then I saw there was a patch of iron not that far away, and so I thought I might as well go and grab that. Um, at the moment, so so at the moment that that's not 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 there, but we'll bring we'll bring one out next time we come. That's that's absolutely fine. And the same with the manufacturer that's going to be turning the iridium ingots into iridium plates in order to pass them through for the for the Naquium processing. I would quite like to have used a completely different system for generating the power here because this is the, this is actually the system that Tristan used in his previous run, and we we try where we can to do something completely different. Um, so ideally, I would have liked to have done. I'd say something that he hadn't done before, um, but we couldn't think of a, th a, a, a third good way of doing it. So the first way is bring out heat in the spaceship and then use the um, and then pump water into the spaceship to turn that heat into steam, which you can then use to uh, to power your power your factory and store the steam in massive tanks. The alternative is put in a, a, a beam receiver out here. Now a, th a third possibility would be to put in a nuclear power plant, but I feel like that would be just generally worse than all of this because it would require me to bring out large quantities of uranium to keep it running it would also require water it's not really feasible another possibility would be to put down an absolutely enormous solar field the problem is that out here in in very very deep space we have one percent solar uh, out here so we'd need probably literally thousands of solar panels in order to generate the power and especially as we want to use all these machines with all of these speed modules in them that's going to also put quite a lot of extra um, drain on the on, on the system because I mean each one of these is going to be using um, 840 kilowatts that is not too bad but yeah it, it adds up quite quickly and the, dr the drills use 500 kilowatts each and we're gonna have quite a lot of them so I think I think having a good powerful generation system like that is, is the way to go and so yes, I think I made a good start on all the building out here. Um, I have since flown back to uh, Norvis in order to get some of the bits and pieces I've forgotten, but you know, there's, there's always there's always bits and pieces pieces you forget. And fortunately, the spaceship I've got is reasonably quick, so it takes less than ten minutes to do to do the, the one way journey. And there were plenty of other things for me to fiddle with while the ship was on the way on the move. So it, I don't feel too bad about having to uh, having to go round again to go and get some extra stuff. I also spent some time thinking about how I'm going to do the rest of the Naquium processing because this is a bit of a headache. As you can see, it takes in pretty much every, a bit of everything you could possibly imagine. So we do of course get the Naquitite ore going in at the beginning because that's the, that's the starting point of absolutely everything. But then the um, the first step of processing it, as you've seen, requires Iridium. Then the next step, well, there are two ways to get uh, refined Naquitite and Naquitite powder. And one of those requires Holmium cables, which we can ship in from Norbit, that's not a problem, we have them there. And also uh, Vitalic Acid, which again we have in Norbit in barrels, which is going to be, it's just going to be a bit of a faff to get it over there, and I don't know what I'm going to do with the empty barrels afterwards, but it is a thing that can certainly be done. We're also going to need the uh, red, the uh, cation exchange beads, which require plastic, again in Norvis, so that's okay. Vulcanite, again in Norvis, so we can do that. Sulfuric Acid, We'll have to make more, even more of that on site to bring even more sulfur into wherever we're doing this. And steam, steam's okay. We can just boil water. That I think that I think we can manage. 
and so that will make uh, 40, that will make, a, a, looking at this, roughly twice as much powder as it will naquitite. There is an alternative recipe that also makes a refined naquitite and naquium powder, and that produces slightly more refined so we, uh, than it does uh, powder. So looking at this one, this one produces far more powder, twice as much powder. This one produces slightly more, potentially twice as much refined, but probably not. And so we're going to have to need, need to use these two recipes in an appropriate proportion in order to keep the a balance of refined of the right amount of refined naquitite and naquin powder. So if there's if there's less refined, then we'll run this recipe. If there's less powder, then we'll run the other recipe. Perhaps with a bit of overlap in the middle. So if, if there's um, so in order to have them both running when we're when we're using both of them in, in in fairly significant quantities, we'll have to see about that. But then this recipe requires uh, beryllium hydroxide which is a, a which is actually a bit different from all the rest of them because the rest the naquim cables the iridium ingots and the vita vitalic acid are all sort of end products so they're they are things that we have been transporting away from the planets already the beryllium hydroxide is an intermediate, so that's one of the steps to make beryllium ingots. And so we haven't been transporting that one off planet. And so for that reason, I've been leaning towards doing all this building on Talos. Um, but also no notably, this requires uh, cryonite as well in the form of cryonite slush. That's another place where we're going to need acid. And it requires anion exchange beads, which are made from plastic bar, cryonite again, more steam and nitric acid. So we're going to need rare metals as well in that. And, and, and mineral water. Oh, this is turning into a ridiculous cacophony of different things that are going to be required. So this is good. So I can see that making making these is making this is going to be extremely complicated, and just getting all of the resources into the right place is going to be quite a mission. Uh, I'm also going to need to then get rid of some of the byproducts. At least the uh, the sulfuric acid can be passed back round into the system. We're going to be using that in many many places for, for the, in, in the production of the uh, of, of the naquium ingots. Uh, the, the blue and red beads can then be looped around and go into the other system for production. I imagine that's probably going to be okay. The Vitalic Reagent and the Pyroflux are going to be okay to bring in. The And then the, the Methane Ice or Methane Gas is going to be fine because we're digging that up over here and producing a certain amount of it out on Big Red as well. But even but yeah, some of the other stuff is just going to be a bit of a, a pain in the wasp name. And of course, once we've got all of this refined Naquitite and Naquium Powder, there's still another step to this process. And that is making the naquit that's making the naquitite crystals, and that requires, as I said, the right reagent, and then a roughly balanced amount of the refined naquitite and the naquin powder, uh, and some of that will be returned as well. It looks sort of vaguely proportional, oh, and only vaguely. That we're we're going to get a bit more of the high, slightly higher proportion of the powder out than the naquitite, but roughly get, getting roughly um, up to half of it back each time, maybe. Um, and then there's a chance of making the crystals. And then once you've got the crystals, you can then finally put those together with some uh, refined naquitite and naquium powder and finally get those naquium ingots. And those can be shipped off to, uh, then shipped off to Norbit to be made into science. However, there's slightly there's one slight uh, extra tricky bit in there, and that is we'll also need to ship out a certain number of naquitite crystals. Just to make things slightly harder, there is one of the sciences that is going to require naquitite crystals. So I'm going to need to ship out both of these in, uh, in appropriate balances just to keep the system, um, just to make sure we've always got enough of both of them. Now this isn't a thing that's going to be too difficult because we've been doing this already with Vulcanite to make sure we get uh, both the enriched Vulcanite and the Vulcanite cubes being delivered in appropriate proportions. So I'm not too worried about tra trying to ship out ingots and crystals. It's just an extra thing that we're going to have to think about and try and try and balance all of these things together and get everything into the right place. Uh, this is going to this is going to be an enormous mission. So we're going to we're going to be looking at this diagram and talking about Naquium a lot over the next few months, I think, because there is a there's a lot going on here. And yes, so the reason I mentioned Talos is because in here you can see we're making th this this step here is making the uh, beryllium hydroxide. Now, unfortunately, I've got that being pumped directly from one machine into another machine here, and that means we're not going to be able to tap off a supply of the beryllium hydroxide out of this machine to take it away and put it into the Naquium processing. Although interestingly, the Naquium processing does turn it into the uh, into the next stage that's required here, the ber the beryllium powder. So if, we, if if I move this machine across a little bit, or maybe move this machine across, one of them can be moved across a little bit. We we can then tap tap out the beryllium hydroxide coming through here, and then bring the uh, the powder back in along here. And I think that's going to allow me to mix, essentially mix all of these together, and, and essentially replace this machine here with all of the naquium processing. Uh, the numbers will probably be out, but I can at least sort of feed feed it feed it through there, and, and hopefully have a sensible quantity of everything flowing through. <laughs> I guess we'll see how that goes. <laughs> oh dear. 
while I'm looking at Talos, we have a recurring problem here, specific, which is uh, running out of um, uh, running out of sulfur, and it's happened again. We now have we're basically we're turning it all into sulfuric acid. The sulfuric acid is used in the beryllium processing, where it goes in here to dissolve the beryl or to turn it into beryllium sulfate. Uh, fine, okay, I I don't care about exactly what it's doing, the exact chemistry of it, but it is a thing that uses a lot of sulfuric acid, and so we're struggling to keep it keep it supplied within with enough of it. And so I've programmed the train down here to monitor how much sulfur there is up in space and how much there is down on the ground. And, and, so, and if we run out of sulfur in this warehouse here and there is some up in space in the, in, uh, coming out of the spaceship, then it will immediately dispatch the train to come up and come and get that. Now at the moment the spaceship is missing, presumed heading over to Norvis in order to drop off some beryllium or perhaps on its way back again. Yes, here it is. It has landed. It is trying to unload all the beryllium it's brought over. There is too much beryllium so it's taking a, it, 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 it's kind of stuck here, but it has started loading up some extra sulfur, so when it comes back there'll be uh, about 15,000 sulfur plus whatever's in this warehouse as well, um, uh, ready to be brought back over. So in order to do this, I've hooked up the um, the train to, uh, to these warehouses up here uh, to monitor how much sulfur there is here. Now this is slightly funny because we already have a minus 15,000 on here, which I haven't separated with a, um, with a combinator uh, at this point, because I decided in the end I didn't actually need to. And so the train is watching for minus 15,000 sulfur down here, and if it sees exactly minus 15,000, then that means there is zero across here, because zero plus minus 15,000 equals minus 15,000. So that 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 will trigger the train, and as you can see, it is triggered. It knows there is minus there. It knows that it is, it is run out of sulfur down here, and therefore that signal is telling it to go. The other one is slightly more complicated. So the amount of sulfur that's da available down here is being transmitted by this um, signal transmitter back over to Norvis, or to Norbit rather, in order to tell it that's how much we need. So at the moment we need, we need a 15,000 because there's n absolutely none here. We're also transmitting the amount that's in uh, Talorbit as well, so in the warehouse up there. That's being transmitted on the same signal, so those are both being sent on Talos supply request. So down here, we're receiving both of those signals to this ta uh, on this receiver to Talos supply request. And so this is receiving the total amount that's here, a minus 15,000 at the moment, and the total amount up in orbit, which may or may not be zero. At the moment it's zero, but when a spaceship has just arrived, it's not. Uh, that's being brought down here. We're then turning that into, uh, that we're turning all of the sulfur into a yellow signal, and the yellow signal is being fed into here. And so we know if, if this yellow signal is greater than minus 15,000, then there is sulfur somewhere in either Talos or Talorbit. We're not sure which, but we know that there is sulfur somewhere. We also then, if we if this if this is triggered, we know that there's no sulfur down on Talos, and therefore if both of them trigger at the same time, then we know there is none on Talos, but there is some up in Talorbit, and therefore it's worth heading up to go and get some. And so if all if those trigger and this man in activity, just to make sure the train is you know busy at the time, then the train will head up to, into orbit to go and get some sulfur and bring it back down where it can unload it and will. And then, and then we'll be able to get get the system running again. And so, as long as there is actually some up there, this feels like a, a reasonably neat, if somewhat convoluted, way of making of getting the train to, to head off to go and get some more sulfur in order to keep the system running. Um, because otherwise, if if you just wait until the train is full, you end up in this sort of position where the train never properly fills up because there isn't enough stuff being being fed through because there's no sulfuric acid to keep it going. In theory, we could keep the system just sort of ticking over slightly on the core chunks. However, that doesn't seem to have happened because we've now run out of acid to deal with the barrel that's coming out of the core processing, um, and so this is backed up all the way through here. So there's no core chunks coming out, so we're not getting any oil, so we're not getting any sulfur, yada yada yada. Um, However, we have enough, as you, as you saw, we have plenty of beryllium over in Norbit, so at the moment this isn't a problem. I am thinking that for the Naquium, I'm going to have an additional ship that's doing the run from Norbit to Talos in order to uh, then do a sort of a changeover up there of, well, we're going to have it bringing out a lot more sulphur, um, both for to, for bringing to down here and for, oh dear, we're going to need it also to be taken out to, um, to Stardust for, for making the acid to mine the Naquatite as well. Oh, I don't know if we're going to be able to bring enough sulfur out. This might be a problem. Uh, well, 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 that, that's a, that's a problem for later. There are going to be, there is going to be an awful lot of um, byproducts being shipped back. So we'll um, we may find that the ship fills up very very quickly for the return load. Um, we shall have to see how that goes because that's a, that's a headache I hadn't actually thought about yet. Um, I may also want to decide I want just want to have the um, the deep spaceship do a three a three step tra uh, route where it goes to um, Norbit then to Stardust, then to uh, Talorbit. We shall see, because that's going to be, uh, yeah, that's going to be complicated. I, I might, I'm going to have to think I want through very, very carefully.
I think a final thing to have a quick look at before we call an end to this episode is going to be that uh, Tristan's put in a system to bring, or he's, he's turned, turned up the numbers a little bit, so more cryonite is being brought out over here to Big Rid. And this means this can the, the cryonite can then flow down here, and we talked well, we talked about this before, but the idea is this is now going to be freezing all of the methane gas that we've got stockpiled in this uh, in this tank. And I say stockpiled as if there's loads of it. Uh, we have now successfully dealt with virtually all of it, and there's now only 370 in this tank. Um, but that's all getting frozen down with cryonite slush here, and then sent off down the belt here and to be put into the into the spaceship and and, and, and taken away. And we're going to make sure that we bring at least lots of this over to um, over to Talos in order to turn, use that to make the in order to make the Naquium because there's no point in just bringing it from um, deep space just for the sake of it. We might as well use up this supply as well because it's. I'm not going to call it unlimited, but it is it is a byproduct that we want to use up. So I think it's it's good to bring that over here, shove it into the spaceship, and then we'll 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 sort it out from there and see how that gets on. The rest of it, woof, we'll, we, I don't know. We'll have, we'll, we'll find a way of making it all, I'm sure. But it's going to be, it's going to be a mission. And on that slightly smelly note, I think I shall call this an end of the uh, end of the episode. We only had two of us playing on uh, on in the last stream because uh, Mike, Mike had the plague of some some form or another, and uh, Mark is still off on his um, on his holidays. So we uh, we're yeah a little a little thin on the ground. So I think we might I might not have an enormous amount to talk about. But that said, the Naquium has been an extremely big. Thing. So I hope it wasn't too overwhelming having me uh, rambling on about that for the last half hour. <laughs> uh, I will of course be back on Monday with the other half of this update, back on Tuesday with a, another satisfactory stream where I shall carry on trying to do things with steel and maybe see if I can keep my, uh, um, my space elevator happy, give it another upgrade. And then uh, we'll be back on Thursday, hopefully with Mike as well by then. Uh, he'll be hopefully he'll be feeling a bit better, and we'll be carrying on. With, well, I'll be carrying on with the Naquium. Mike will no doubt be carrying on with Iridium, and Tristan will be carrying on trying to deal with I don't know who knows who knows what solving solving all the crises that everyone else is um, uh, is trying is trying to ignore. Maybe I, I don't know. We'll see how we'll see how it goes. So as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.